Hello and welcome to Unstitches. Today I've got this lovely Nelman sewing machine on the bench. It's a hand crank machine and you'll notice it's got the uh, number here that's the auction number. Uh, so this came from the auction that I picked it up from last year. If you haven't uh, seen that auction video I'll link it in the description down below. Uh, but I thought I'd get this machine out and uh, make sure that it's all running nicely and I thought I would take you through what I found with the machine so far anyway and there's some history with this machine and what caught my eye at the auction was it had this uh, little card with it here and you can see there that it says it's a 1871 machine it's a got a serial number there mode is hand crank it's a boat shuttle and there's a little story here it says uh, given by Reverend Lilling, Lillingston of London to his 14 year old nursery nurse Eleanor Callow about 1878 when no longer knew passed on to her daughter in 1956 and constant use until 1972 Settle and Nelman so yeah nice little bit of history there and it's modern history uh, basically it came to me through the auction so I spent some time yesterday just making sure that I could progress far enough to make a, a video that would show you that the machine works and uh, I'll take you through some of what I've done with the machine you know the machine's not in perfect condition you can see that the label here on the front is faded away and the decals are quite worn but I like the fact that it's uh, you know it was in use until 1972 and I suspect it might have been sitting since then uh, judging by the state of some of the components and I'll take you through that so I thought today that I would take you through what I've done to the machine so far and uh, some of the problems that I had to overcome with the machine you might notice a couple of things wrong with it already and I've kind of put it back to where it was when I found it. I haven't cleaned the machine, it's as I basically found it. You'll notice that the needle clamp here is not uh, configured correctly. That's the way I found it. I did fix that and position that correctly and put a needle into it. So let's, we'll do that later. And then um, a little bit of work on the bobbin winder. So let's uh, have a quick look at that bob and winder there now as with a lot of things with this machine it was quite seized up and I had to go through and work away at uh, you know freeing up these little mechanisms here for the bob and winder that is the mechanism that latches uh, the bob and winder into position so if I push that forward you'll see that this uh, little there's a little bolt that goes through here a screw and this pops up behind it here to latch uh, this you know the bobbin winder rubber here uh, the tire against the hand wheel and as the bobbin gets full it uh, pushes this little lever down and allows this mechanism to uh, come back here you see like that and this here was completely seized up this little latching mechanism here this all needed to be uh, sorted out now the the bobbin wind is not a hundred percent perfect uh, and I'll show you why now the way I think this is supposed to work uh, and I couldn't find much information online so if anyone knows for a hundred percent sure uh, if you could let me know just uh, down in the description below it'd be really helpful but this here pushes forward you know to engage the tire and this here latches up so keeps it against the tire there and then this little bar here runs up against the bobbin and I think what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to as the bobbin fills up this is supposed to move back so we have to engage that like that and my understanding is, is that moves back as the bobbin fills and disengages the bobbin winder now that side of it's not working a hundred percent and I'll show you what happens there but in the meantime what you can do is you can just ignore this here and you know just manually stop the bobbin winding process when 
you know you get a, enough uh, thread onto the bobbin. So I'll show you that there. I'm also not 100% convinced about the threading. Now there's a bobbin winder tensioner here and an eyelet, but they both don't seem to line up the way I would expect them to. So the way I thought it might thread is, is you bring the thread through, I'll show you, uh, I'll just put thread there. The way I thought it might thread is if we just bring thread through the eyelet like so, and then you can see there that the eyelet's not in line with the tensioner, doesn't quite look right. And this tensioner is skewed to the right of the bobbin. And what it causes it to do <clears throat> is it winds to the right hand side more so than the left. It causes uneven winding. And so I thought, well, maybe uh, that comes through this here last, which lines up more centrally with the bobbin winder. So then I just thought, well, maybe I'll just uh, put the thread back down through that eyelet there, like that. And that seems to work quite well. So it gives even feeding of the, or even distribution of the thread there. Now, when I thread these, I find it easier to do this part with the bobbin off the winder and just find the little hole in the end there. Thread that thread through there, like that. And then this has to come underneath here because the thread has to come around the back of the bobbin winder here. And then, you know, you can just position this into the winder like so. Uh, let's get that around there. This was all seized up here too. This part was all seized that had to be dealt with. Yep. Okay, and I'll just pull that thread. Just trim that little tail off there. And you'll see there that that winds quite nicely. Uh, I'll try disconnecting the clutch there. There we go. Yeah, it's still driving the machine slightly. It just needs a bit more lubrication. That tail needs to come off. Uh, I'll show you what happens. So you can see that's winding quite nicely there. This is just pretty cruddy thread, by the way. I don't want to use all my uh, old school Silco thread on uh, winding the bobbin at this stage, just for testing. So I'm just using mediocre thread there. But you can see that that's winding nice and evenly there, right? But if I engage this here, like that, oh, just disengage there. Yeah, it seems to, it seems to change the pressure against the hand wheel there sometimes. And it just takes adjusting to sort that out. Yeah, so I found that I've had to adjust it to get it to, and that's that adjusting screw down there, to get a little bit more pressure onto the hand wheel there. There we go. And winding nicely there until we get to this right hand side and it seems to do that. I'll get you in closer. Yeah, you can see it all bunching up on the right side here. And I think it's this lever here that's stopping this thread from coming back. Which is, yeah, I wonder if this is just a little bit too stiff somehow. I'm not sure if I've got this 100% right. But anyway, if I take that off, you know, it comes back to sort of working correctly there. So, you know, this little lump at the end here is going to cause an issue, I think. So I'll go ahead and I'll just pull this thread off here and I'll rewind the bobbin. Yeah, still favouring that right-hand side for some reason there. Not sure it's going to make too much difference. 
just leaves a little lamp on the right there. Okay, that should be enough just for testing there. Gee, the camera really shows the fluffiness of this thread. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, not so easy to see to the naked eye, but uh, geez, with it zoomed in like that, you can see, you know, that this is uh, not the best. It's mediocre thread, I would say. It's not the worst I've seen. Okay, I'll show you how to thread the shuttle here. So the thread should come off uh, like that there. So when you turn the bobbin, you can see it's turning clockwise as such, looking from this direction. Thread's coming off from the left there and you load that into your bobbin with the nose going in there first into the bobbin or the shuttle you'll notice that there's a, a little bar down here a little, a little slot with a bar in the middle so you go underneath the little bar through the slot there like that and then you come around and back through the top slot there, like that. So it should run like that there. Just hook the thread under that little hook there. And I've found the easiest way to complete this here is to uh, hold the thread here, trap the thread with my thumb, come in around the back of the spring here and then that pulls in under the tensioner there. And that's threaded nicely there, ready to go. Uh, I'll install that. We'll pull this left hand slide plate across here. And you may find that uh, it might not come across because if the uh, shuttle driver is on the right hand side, it's got a little uh, latch that pulls this closed automatically little bar that's hooked around the driver and if it's if the driver's over this side you can't pull this back you have to let the driver come back with the plate there like that okay and these were seized solid that one was seized absolutely solid i'll show you in a sec what uh, i had to deal with there uh, but i've oiled all this up so it's sliding nicely there and then we can just go ahead and drop the shuttle into their nose first like that and that's it pretty much set to go there we do need to draw that bobbin thread up when we get ready for sewing there you'll notice that there's a little cut out on the uh, this plate here to allow just a little bit of clearance there for the bobbin thread okay so that doesn't trap the thread there those of you who know these machines will realize that this needle clamp is not installed correctly this is how i found it no it's not in fact i'll show you exactly how i found this when i got the machine i found it like this here like that and yeah thought that looked a bit strange so someone's obviously had a little bit of a play and uh, put that on incorrectly now i'll go through the needles and installing a needle here so first of all, uh, you'll notice that this is quite oily uh, uh, because I had a lot of uh, fun, uh, let's say, with this uh, sewing head part here. And I'll show you more about that later. But to get this uh, working properly, if we have a look around this side here, you'll see there's a little hole in the needle bar there, just here. And that lines up with this screw the end of the screw here and that comes in around the back like that sorry bumping that camera i'll just bring the needle bar up and then so you can see the hole there and you just line that screw up there like that get that on there and screw that in okay and we don't need to i'll just finger tight just very lightly clamp that up there just to hold that in place and let's have a look at the situation with the needles with this machine now as far as 
spare needles, so ne needles that aren't installed in machines that I've currently already got, uh, which I don't think all of them have needles in them, just got a very few of them. I had this needle here, and I had another one that had a bent shank, and I've got a friend that uh, wanted her machine, it was a Frister and Rossman, she wanted it serviced and, um, and set up and ready to go again, and I mm, I was scratching around for needles, so um, I bent the shank back straight of the other needle I had, and, um, and uh, gave that to her. Yeah, so this was the last remaining needle that I had uh, until uh, my friend, the same friend, called me and said, guess what, I've found a score, machine needles, and this is just over half I would say, and she found this while she was uh, out thrifting, uh, so she found it at an op shop here, or reasonably locally I think and oh, all of 50 cents so a real score so yeah nice little stash of spare needles thank you Maxine greatly appreciated uh, Maxine kept some for herself and she uh, kindly offered me the rest of these which will be very very handy now the reason uh, these are special is because they oh, for one are getting harder to find and people are asking absorbent prices online for them and the special thing about these needles is you'll notice the shank is very thin that's the shank down this end pointed in down here and we'll try and get you in real close here you just see there that that shank is very thin it's almost you know the same size as the needle it's just slightly thicker and that's what's required for this particular machine, the Norman, and also the likes of the Frister and Rossman, etc. And if you compare that with a standard universal needle, you'll see that the universal's got quite a chunky shank to it. Try not to stab myself here. See that shank there? Quite chunky. That's a standard universal 15x1 or 130/705H universal, and that is a size 80. So I think that this old needle here is probably more like a size 70, and the shank, as you can see there, is not much thicker. I would say the shank is probably about the same as a size 80. Now I had a really good look around in uh, the industrial side of needles to see whether I could find something that would match. I even went to the New Zealand supplier for Smets and they went back to Smets in Germany and uh, Smets basically came back and said they haven't been making these needles since about 1930. <laughs> so if you see them out in the wild, yeah, make sure you grab some. Just look for that thin shank. Now there's two different types, there's a 12 by one or 12 x one, it's sometimes known as, and a 13 x one. And as far as I know the difference is that the 13 x one is just longer than the 12 x one. I suspect these may be 13 x ones, just judging by the length of them and you'll see when I fit this into the machine uh, how it looks there but uh, I know the machine does so with this needle I tested it so uh, that's that's all good so yeah thank you again Maxine for this little treasure here uh, install these in a lot of my vintage machines which will be very handy to actually have them sewing rather than having to rely on just the sole needle that I managed to find and you know uh, swapping it into each machine is required this one's a little bit is that just dirty? Yeah, it could be just dirty. It's been in the uh, Nelman machine here, and uh, it, I can show you, I'll show you later, but it was very dirty uh, mechanically. Uh, so yeah, as far as I know with the standard universals, I think some of the older singers will accept these here. It's got the flat on the shank. That's the other thing about these needles here. Uh, these old ones here, they've got a round shank, completely round, so a little bit more like the industrial needles. 
Now before I go showing you the needle fitting process, I thought I'd show you the fun I had <laughs> with this, uh, this section here. Now I was test sewing and it was looping on the top, looping on the bottom, it was terrible and I noticed uh, when I dropped the foot you know for sewing that the uh, the tension release was not releasing and there was just no tension on the thread and no matter what I did uh, you know I was tightening the tension here this was seized up by the way the little lock nut uh, I did manage to get that off I was you know tightening this right down and you know playing with this and I you know I knew something was seized up inside here and I knew I had to rectify that. You can see there, I'll get you in closer, you can see there that this disc is, is loose and that's you know where your thread goes in between the two discs here, gets clamped in here and that's really loose there. That's by design because the uh, presser foot is lifted and when you lift the presser foot uh, there's a mechanism that releases the tension so that you can pull your material out nice and easily without snapping the thread. And you'll notice here when I drop the foot, if you just keep an eye on this here, you'll see this move in. And that's clamping. See that there? That's clamping pressure onto this disc here and the and therefore the thread. And I noticed when I was dropping the foot, this wasn't clamping. Now, that was an interesting exercise, getting that sorted. Because the whole faceplate had to come off and the screws, these screws, were very, very tight. <laughs> so I'll show you inside here, show you what the problem was. So I knew that it, there was a problem with the tension release and the tension release is related to this lever here. So first of all, I'll take this lever off. I don't think you have to do this necessarily, but I'll show you. Just yeah, be very careful. There's a little washer there, that one there. Just be careful that doesn't get lost. And this is a dirty job. This machine was quite dirty. It's gritty inside here, and yeah, pretty pretty nasty. It's a lot cleaner than what it was. I can tell you that. Now, okay, so you know these screws were as say extremely tight but nice and loose there now and I've oiled everything up and you kind of have to be a little bit careful here because things can fall out uh, but it's pretty easy to get back together okay two screws there and then oh this was tight too this whole face plate here you know by right should just come off nice and easily like that that was as tight as anything. I had to work away at that. Um, so if we just leave the needle bar behind and have a look in behind here. This is our foot mechanism there, foot bar with a pressure spring at the top there. Adjustable by screwing this up and down. We've got our tensioner spring here so that leads out to the front there so this pin here goes right through and is pulled in by this spring here and its tension is determined by how far you screw this little conical screw down so as you screw it down it puts more pressure uh, pulling towards towards you here uh, therefore pulling this in and providing more tension there and I could see that when I took this off uh, that the tension had come right. You know, this was pulling in nicely, which meant that the tension release was holding this little bar out. And the tension release is this little thing down here. Just bear with me, clean my hands here while I handle things. And trust me, this is looking a lot cleaner than what it was. Uh, in a way I kind of wish I got photos of it but this I could only just see the little nub of this um, sticking out 
I'll remove the needle bar here, show you that in a second. This was jammed solid in here. I'll show you how this works. That there pivots here, right? And then on the back of this is a beveled section here. It's a little bit dirty still, but that section there beveled. And so when you lift the when you lift the foot lever, it, that beveled section pushes this pin here. And that was seized as well. That was seized solid. I had to get a pin punch and push that through. And what that does in turn, if we look at the other side, is it pushes this little pin here out, right? So when you lift the foot, this pin comes out or in like that, pushes in. And what that does is it pushes against this, if we say the screwdriver is the pin, and it pushes against that, and that in turn pushes this little nub here out, which in turn pushes that there to release the tension. So that's how the mechanism works. And basically the whole lot was seized solid. I even had trouble getting this out. I mean that comes out, it's a little it's a little pivot type arrangement there and so it pivots like that so when the pin comes through it pushes that it pushes that out like that that I had to dig out with a screwdriver it was solidly I mean it's not all that clean in here yet but it's a lot better than what it was there's also a little return spring you might be able to see down in there and that had to be pulled out and cleaned as well yeah, so basically uh, with a lot of cleaning and a lot of oil, I basically was just, you know, splurging oil around here and got that to the point where it was, you know, free in there and, you know, freed the spring up, freed the pin up and that fixed the problem. Interesting. Got there in the end. Yeah, I didn't record it because I just didn't know how far I was going to be able to get. This here's your take-up lever. That's spring-loaded take-up lever there. There's a little spring there, just a little return spring. In fact, I would get some oil into there. And it's quite a nifty little mechanism. This basically turns, that's the main shaft turning there with this little driver here. That is spinning freely there. As I say, I've poured oil into this thing like nothing else. And this is the back side of the needle bar, right? So this is the mechanism here. And you'll see that as this turns, it runs down here. So basically it's pushing this up and down as it needs be. And it does a little dip. You'll notice when the machine's sewing, the needle bar will come down to the bottom come up slightly to form a loop and then down again to form a little bit of slack for the shuttle to go through and then up again and that's what this mechanism here does where it interfaces here now oil will be absolutely fine I'm sure for this but I'd be tempted if the machine was going to be used a lot to actually uh, grease this yeah I just I think it lends itself to to grease this mechanism probably I think this mechanism would benefit from the a little bit of grease there I mean what harm can it do All right and oh, we've also got this this is the adjuster for the uh, the resting position of the take up lever and there you go you can see you can see some of the crud that I was dealing with it, and it's kind of gritty some of this crud you know I'm not doing a full restore on this machine I'm just getting it to the point where I can get it sewing but um, I mean it, by rights it should be all sort of taken apart and cleaned thoroughly uh, which is quite a big job but I think you know just for what I want to do to get it up and running 
uh, just a, a quick clean like that should be fine and you know that that stuff there yeah that's gritty feeling so I don't know why uh, it has that sort of texture to it just pop that on there it's the uh, take up lever heads through that slot there and then we just line up the little driver there and you'll be able to see the motion of this here when I turn comes down the needle bar pushes the take up lever down it's spring loaded to the bottom rises slightly forms a loop comes down to create slack for the shuttle to get through and then up it comes again just like that that just pops straight on like that there and then it's just a matter of putting the mounting screws back in there like that and of course the foot lift lever goes on okay and you can see there the tension release working there so that's good enough now for uh, the machine to actually sew uh, but let's have a quick look under the throat plate there now this screw here was extremely tight as well I managed to get it in the end and the throat plate was jammed in there as well certainly pays if you've got one of these to just every so often just take some of these bits and pieces off and just you know oil these sliders and things like that put oil down down here clean this see that's all see that there that's all gunky give that a clean just even a, a bit of a just a scrape off there you don't really want to go too harsh on that it's just get rid of that crusty dried up old oil I would say that is just makes it a little bit easier for next time you take the plate off and then I would be tempted to oil that again as well just to keep it moist as such you know so that it doesn't dry out and just bind up like that again yep. as I say I'm not doing a full full-on restore I would probably spend some time cleaning the bottom of this up as well but I won't go through that in full detail today but you can see the idea I'm just sort of scraping off that hard crusty stuff I guess you could find a cleaning some sort of cleaning solution to clean it even more than that once you're done there but yeah like that and just getting a bit of crud around here it's quite a dirty job this one and I can see that there is quite a bit of lint jammed in down here you know look it's actually moving with the oh yeah jam-packed hasn't been has it not been cleaned since 1872 maybe it hasn't been serviced since then I don't know but that could be lint from Blimmin 1872 couldn't it oh look at that jam packed in there just put my light on there so you can see that maybe a bit easier yeah that's definitely not good that causes the feed to bind uh, and it's forward and it's forward uh, travel there I would say or at least cause stress and um, cause wear I would say on the mechanism now I would also clean in here as well now you, you want to be careful you don't want to be you sort of scratching around too much especially with a screwdriver uh, you know I'm just gently gently going there don't use too much force there
just I'll just give it a quick clean there nothing too major at this stage now this one here this slider here this was solidly jammed and I literally had to get a uh, I got a brass punch a brass punch coming in from this angle and I hit it to free this up I had I'd soaked it overnight with a penetrating oil and also put normal oil on it as well and yeah it was extremely hard to move I got it in the end uh, I did slightly damage the edge here and I wonder whether the brass punch even a brass punch might have been too harsh I'm wondering whether that might be best using a wooden uh, punch of some sort some sort of uh, something a bit softer anyway you can see it's just slightly damaged that part there while I'm here I might as well fit the needle so that we can see its interaction with the shuttle now we'll just bring that needle bar to the top there and with a machine like this you install the needle so that the little scarf at the back that you can see just there not the long slot that goes to the front and the little short little scarf down by the eye there uh, that goes to the back okay so bring the needle bar up here and just loosen that clamp there slightly and bring that up to the stopper just there and just make sure that's straight that's good there sorry bumping the camera there and if we have a close look here we'll be able to see that the needle is against the stopper I'll just show you that again there basically the needle comes up to the stopper there you can't quite see it there but it's in behind this clamp there that's it there I've tried to get you in as close as I possibly can here it might still be a little bit difficult to see but you can see the motion of the needle bar in relation to the uh, shuttle here now needle bars at its lowest position there I'm turning it in operating direction now as I turn you'll see the needle bar rising there and the shuttles coming in right there and by rights the shuttle should be uh, not far above the needle eye and it's difficult to see there but I can see that the eye is is quite a bit lower so it's actually down below where you can't see there so that would indicate there that the needles probably a little bit too long uh, so that's what made me think maybe it's a 13 by 1 and not a 12 by 1 and maybe that 12 by 1 would be a more appropriate one to use uh, but I don't have a 12 by 1 if that's what I uh, am surmising uh, so yeah I don't I don't think I've got a 12 by 1 anyway but I know that it sews and I could modify the needle if need be let's put this plate back on reasonably clean there not perfect but let's see how this goes oh there is another problem I've found with the machine and I did notice it actually uh, right from the start there when I picked up the machine and that is the the stitch length lever or the little knob is broken slide that back in there that could do with probably a little bit more oil there maybe a little bit more cleaning that Okay, now if we have a look over here, we'll see that the thumb screw is missing, and that is because it's broken off. And I see this quite often. Uh, can we see it down there? 
bit hard to see, but it's right there where the seven is there. That is the little broken off nub that's left over. Uh, that's common, that's where the stitch length mechanism seizes up and people, you know, loosen the thumb screw and then really give it a good tug and it breaks the thumb screw off. Uh, so that needs to be sorted out. Now, tip this back. It's got a little latch down the front there. Just tip it back and see what we've got here. And let it go right back there. And I suspect this, yeah, there's the remainder of the little thumb screw there, the end of it. And these here get tight and seize up so let's see if we can free that up i find it easier to remove these two little retainers here and uh, actually try and remove this whole bar to try and clean it up so i'll just uh, remove this one very very stuck in there i don't want to force it too much. Got there. It's really jammed in there. Really jammed in tight. Uh, I'll take this off and see if I can get the whole unit out, including this here, and uh, work on it from there. Let's remove this here. And will that plate come off? Okay, and these jam up. I mean, this this is supposed to slide, right? That's your stitch length regulator, and these seize up badly. So probably, oh yeah, there we go. That's promising. That needs a good clean, that whole runner, that whole slot there needs a, a very good clean. And there we can see this is the common issue, right? So there's the remainder of the screw there. I might be able to one day get a spare part, but what I'll do in the meantime is I'll just preset the stitch length. These are the best pliers, just so good. Yeah, that's coming. Coming there, yep, there we go. That's the remnant there. Okay, so that's handy. I'll be able to replace that. This needs a good clean up. I mean, this metal is as hard as hard, right? So I think scraping it like this is probably not going to do it too much harm. Normally I would do this on the bench not sort of up against the machine like this but it's just convenient in front of the camera there and then I think we're just with the liberal lashings of oil that should slide in there nicely and I will get some more oil that and some down in here like that I assume that's all working fine yep so we're getting some oil onto these points here as well but let's just work this through that's it there and Just get it to the point where it's reasonably easy to slide there. Yeah, that's that's freeing up nicely there. And then it's just a matter of setting the stitch length. I'm just going to wing it there to start with. While I'm here, I'm just going to oil these points here. So 
Oh, that's the feed mechanism. Feed mechanism here. Just get, yeah, just pour heaps of oil around it. I'm, you know, along this slider here for the shuttle drive. Needs a good oil. That pivot there. This one over here. It's good. That one in there. Get lashings of oil around there. That's I think every moving part. Pretty much. Right. And There. And we'll get this back together. And I think we're nearly ready for a test so here. Sorry about the voice over here, it's, uh, I had my microphone in my pocket after dealing with a customer. Okay, time to oil the top of the machine, top half anyway. I did a little bit of oiling yesterday, but I uh, thought I'd just go through and show you the oil points. I did spend quite a bit of time yesterday also oiling the clutch here. And if we have a look at the release mechanism there, it should release nicely but it's a little bit tight there get a bit of oil onto there and then the actual hand wheel uh, where it interfaces between the driver and the hand wheel there needed quite a bit of oil as well so it's running a lot freer now and then the uh, little engaging clip goes back in that's a very tight screw had to get a different screwdriver just to uh, you know, get it right into the screw slot there. It uh, probably hadn't been undone for decades. <laughs> but uh, we'll swing that one out of the way. And we can see the bevel gear there. That's the gear that drives the uh, vertical shaft that runs down to the bottom of the machine. So that meshes with a gear on the top shaft there. And I think it's uh, probably better to get grease on there. Uh, rather than just oil and uh, just cleaning up a little bit of the excess there so we don't have too much grease around there. Tighten that back up, that screw there. Oh, actually just oiling the screw there. Give it a little wipe down there and uh, just the top shaft there needs more oil and yep, the head I oiled quite uh, substantially yesterday. Now that Another tight screw there and uh, two screws holding the back cover on there. Two very tight screws. And that cover should just pop off, but uh, it was a little bit tight there. It just took a little bit of persuasion to get it off. And there we go. That's just a, a view from the rear there. You can see the bevel gears with the grease on it. Uh, and the oil points have basically already been done. Uh, do, redo this top one here. And I'll put the back cover back on. There's the two mounting screws. And you can see the... Yep, just tighten those two screws up there. And you can see the decals on the back there looking rather worn but at least uh, still visible and if we have a look around at the actual crank drive that's a good idea to uh, oil these points here and there's one for the idler down just in here yeah and that's nice and smooth it's a very nice smooth crank system very, very well engineered, very well made. Okay, we'll swing it around to the front there and we'll be pretty much ready for a 
clean up and a test drive. I was wondering how this was going to clean up and I'll just get a little bit of oil on here and to see whether we can get this mother of pearl to look any better. A little bit of uh, dirt coming off onto the rag there. But that rear piece of mother of pearl has actually uh, got the decal, part of the decal still on it. The mother of pearl kind of comes through the decal and makes it look uh, sort of translucent. It looks, looks really nice. Yeah, still quite a bit of gunk coming off on the rag there. That needs a very good deep clean. Let's we'll put a bit more oil on there and we'll just keep going until we get rid of all the dirt there. I'm just using a Winsiet cloth. Uh, it's like a, an old Winsiet sheet. It's cotton, pure cotton. It's quite soft. Uh, so, you know, it's... It's not overly harsh, but you can see the machine's had a lot of wear, a lot of use. I'm not going to get too carried away with the cleaning process here, but it is improving. I just really want to get it to the point where it looks quite nice. You know, I don't want to go really berserk with deep, deep cleaning. I'm not sure how much better I could actually get this. But it certainly makes the decals come through nicely, doesn't it? A little bit of oil, even though it's very worn. This is the sort of thing that I could sit and do, you know, a little bit of cleaning on some of these old machines while I'm at the uh, quilt shows, you know, that I attend. And the next one coming up is at Collingwood, which is in Golden Bay, not far from where we are. And um, quite often at the quilt shows I take along vintage machines and new machines, you know, to uh, sh show them off. And, you know, this is something that I could do while I'm, uh, you know, sitting there and, and people can come along and uh, have a chat and see what I'm up to. I quite like to have a hand crank machine there, actually. And um, people can come along and use the machine. Kids quite like to... Yeah, have a go on the old hand crank. So yeah, if anyone in the local area here is uh, watching and would like to come over and see us, it's Labor Weekend, uh, which is late October, I think it is, uh, 2023, Collingwood. Uh, yeah, pop in and say good day. Get a bit more oil around the back here and it's starting to look a bit better. I take quite a different range of machines to the quilt shows, uh, you know, ranging right from these old hand crankers through to uh, the Singer Genie, if you've seen that video on the brightly coloured Singer Genie from the 70s. Uh, sometimes I take a grasshopper, Elna grasshopper, or Elna number one, uh, attracts a little bit of attention and the featherweight of course of people like those and uh, you know even you know the Benina 830s and things like that although they're quite a plain sort of machine a plain looking machine they uh, do you know people do comment on them to you know say that they were brought up with using one of those and and um, they talk about those quite a bit so yeah that, that's pretty good I uh, take along my new Faf Quilt Expression uh, 720. That's a pretty fancy new machine. It's starting to look better already. I mean, just a quick go over with a bit of, you know, an oily, oily rag uh, can make a world of difference. Not too sure whether the likes of this German machine, whether they used a shellac like Singer did. Doesn't seem to have that shellac coating you know, coming off in areas. So, yeah, if you know, I'd appreciate a comment down below. Yeah, I'd be interested to see, you know, how long I ha would have to do this, <laughs> go through this process for before the uh, rag didn't pick up any more grime. Yeah, they certainly put a lot of time into the decals and, 
you know, prettying these machines up. And you certainly wouldn't see it today, that's for sure. You might see a little bit uh, sort of printed onto a plastic cover, but certainly nothing like uh, these decals, which are basically transfers onto the paintwork there. There's a little bit of rust there, just where the take-up lever slot is there, just at the bottom of that. I bet these would have looked amazing brand new. Imagine bringing this home for the first time when you've shelled out probably quite a bit of money and you take the lid off, which I don't have unfortunately, and you take the lid off and you'll see a gleaming machine sitting in front of you. It would be pretty amazing back in 1871. Okay, so all set to test tow now. Okay, let's thread the machine up. Uh, I'm going to use this nice uh, Silco mercerized cotton here. I thought that's appropriate for an older machine. It's uh, not the oldest thread around, but pretty old. And if we have a look around the front here, we've got two eyelets. I'll thread through one of those. And uh, I'm wondering whether the second eyelet has something to do with the bobbin winder. Whether the thread comes over here and then back over here and down to the bobbin winder somehow. Come down around the tensioner. I can feel that that's got nice tension on it there. Press foot's down, lift it up. It's loose now. And down again and that's nice and tight. So that's good. And then with the thread through the take up from front to back there. Come down to the eyelet there, just above the needle, and then thread front to back through the needle eye there, which is quite oily. <laughs> okay. Just like that. And I think I need to just pull a little bit of extra thread out the bobbin there and let's draw up this bobbin thread here that and we're all set to sew there let's bring that around just like that now the machine's quite oily here so we might get a little bit of oil transferring onto the thread there just uh, popping down the little bit more uh, foot pressure there, press foot pressure, let's see here we go, well it's sewing, that's something, yeah, oh it's looking nice apart from the oil contamination there, it's, the tension is looking good as well, looking very nice. Could probably go a little bit looser on the top. Tension there. Whoops, press foot down, helps. Hopefully that didn't affect it. We've got a little loop there where I didn't have the press foot down. Did it? Oh, looping underneath. Try that again. I think it's yeah, a bit loopy underneath. I've gone too loose on the top tension there. I'll just put a little bit more tension on that. I should have left it where it was. <laughs> yep, I think that's better. Yep, that's better. Just a little bit more top tension on there has brought it right again. So I just try and get the tension, you know, as loose as possible without it uh, looping. Sometimes when you do loosen your tension off, you go a little bit too far and you end up with getting loops underneath there. Okay, looking pretty good there. And not as well contaminated any longer, still a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, but there we go. 
sewing well there, apart from a little hiccup with too light a tension there, but that looks pretty good. Yeah, so that's it for this one. This lovely little Nelman sewing machine is all up and running and cleaned it, gave it a good clean and unseized the machine and got rid of, you know, uh, potentially decades worth of lint from under the plate there. And yeah, had a, a little bit of a struggle with uh, this area here. The bob and wind is still not 100%, but the machine's running really nicely and smoothly now. So that's, you yeah, got it pretty much to where, you know, I, I want the machine. I may clean it up a little bit more. It's reasonably clean here now after a quick clean today. And so, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon. And as always, thank you very much for watching.